from Jehovah Witnesses. Okay, we are recording. It's uh, Dan and Angela here with Heart. Uh, Heart to Heart, and we're talking to Dennis from South Africa. Yay! And uh, we're really glad uh, you joined us. We're, we, we really love to talk to people from all over, and, and I'm so glad you contacted us, and I'm looking forward to having a nice conversation with you, Dennis. And I'm just curious, uh, you know, you, you've probably got uh, some questions. I, I, I know you said you've listened to some of our podcasts and, and different things, and there's probably some questions that pop up and some things that maybe we can share to give a little more clarity. Because a lot of times when you're talking in a podcast, you can't hit all the details. And there's some there's some unbelievable things that I'd really like to share that I didn't get to share in some of the other podcasts. But if you'd like to tell us, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, kind of who you are and, uh, you know, and wh what you are looking for in the way of this podcast and uh, so that we can share that with you, that'd be awesome. Or what you're all about. What's yeah. important to you. Yeah, what's important to you. Yeah, um, what is important to me is, uh, I got interested in how you dealt with whole the whole issue with the Jehovah Witnesses. Um, you know, in life, human being, we are supposed to be free, but there are many uh, organizations and uh, religious and cultural that really try to, you know, enslave us mentally and normal life and, and, and hold us and control whatever we think or whatever we do. Um, so, I, 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 you know, in Africa, there is, we are much religious, much religious, um, but along that, you get born into a region, your parents introduce you to the region, but as you grow up, as you 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 are going up, you you start discovering things. You you start questioning. And there's no room for questioning. Uh, so that causes, you know, misunderstanding between you and your relatives, your family, and, and so somehow you separate. But what I realized is that. When you I, I followed your shows, I realized that actually it's not about only Jehovah Witnesses. It's about religion in general. They build walls. They said Dennis and so and so and so we are perfect, we belong here. Others are excluded. So once they manage to exclude us from others, they beat us in a way that they tell you, you can't go outside because outside it's even worse than here it's at least better. Even if we are we are doing whatever we are doing, we are scrutinizing you, we are, you know, we, we are your master, but outside it's worse because here it's safe. So, um, and you will find that actually all religions, they are talking about unity love but that unity and love is actually about isolating you and lie tell you about love that they have to you in order to exploit you so my question is um be because the region is holding a number of good people Good people are held up in, in religions, different religions, not only Jehovah Witnesses. Uh, probably many of your shows talk about them because maybe that's where I come from. But in searching of truth, I had time to go through a number of religions, but I, I, I quite found the same in all of them. Yeah, we agree. Yeah, you are good. Once you agree with everything they say. Yep, that's right. The moment you question one thing, then you are gone. Yeah. So uh, my question is, 
and that's what I've been wondering all of the time. Uh, how do we how do we reach or have you ever thought about how do you reach out to these people, good people who are still in your region? Um, not necessarily telling them to leave the region because I, I think that's a personal decision and until when someone finds out that it's not working for him. But the region has divided humanity beyond repair. How do we, how can we reach out to these people so that as humanity we can unite for me who doesn't have any link with the region and others who have religion? How can we demolish these wars? Gotcha. That's a that's a great question. And uh it, it's a great noble purpose, you know, to want to help humanity. It really is. You know, that's what Jesus was doing. He was going around trying to wake people up, right? What was he saying? A lot of people say in the churches, he says, just believe in me, but that isn't what he was saying. He was saying, you, 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 and you are the light of the world. These things that I'm doing, these and greater you will do, right? And so most churches don't teach that. Most churches want to, like you said, corral you into their belief systems, their dogma, right? And 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 I'm kind of like you. I, I have to tell you, for a long time, I, I had that idea that I wanted to save the world. And I, I had a spiritual teacher. I wanted to help. I wanted to contribute. How can I help these people wake up? And a quick answer to that, a very quick answer, is to become as light as you can, a light body. Become that universal consciousness. When, when we're one with the spirit, I and the Father are one that light permeates and it and and really it's not us that's why jesus said of myself i do nothing but it's the spiritual dimension that i'm connecting to i and the father are one if you see me you've seen the father that is the invitation for you and me that i and the father would be one jesus said as i am in union with the father and the father is in union with me that you 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 and you would come into union with the Godhead, yes. and, and that would be God in us, like Paul always said, Christ, or the Christos in man, hope of glory, hope of glory, that light is the glory, it's not Dan as an ego, Dan is this, you know, perception, but it was, it's actually an energy field that's radiating out through our heart, and it's touching people, and, and literally, um, Dennis, it, it'll bypass a brainwashed mind. You're talking about how to help people. When we show up with that, when we show up with that, I and the Father are one. And, and here's what I want to say, too. I, I got to say this. In a lot of your new age, <clears throat> a lot of your spiritual communities, they talk like this. They say, I am God, you know, I am God living me, you know, I am. But I noticed in, in several communities that we visited, that was more of an ego understanding. You can have these spiritual principles that we're talking about here, the union, the divine union, but you can have them intellectually, but not embody them. When, when you know that I am the Father one, not just, I'm going to do this for shock value, right? I'm going to walk into a church, say, do you know I'm God living me? Do you know I'm God living me? And you are God living you. And people go, oh, my God. You, you know, the, it, it, it's not the same as walking up to somebody with that understanding that when you're looking at that person, you're looking at yourself. You know, that you have that universal mind that loves and yearns for him to wake up. That, that universal mind that's speaking to you is the Christos. And it's a love that is speaking to the soul. And, 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 and Jesus, I'll just use him because he was, he was the master, right? He was one, one of the masters. But he said, my sheep will hear my voice. What voice? The voice of love. And so your, your intention, Dennis, to help is, is that love. I, I, I want to wake people up. Man, they go from one religion to another. And, and they say, you know, I have the truth. And I, I think it's normal for us to 
want to know the absolute truth. Everyone wants, you know, when, when we were in Jehovah's Witnesses, we said we had the absolute truth. And then you said, you know, a little while ago, that eventually that truth wears off. You know, it's it's like maybe that was a third grade perspective. I'm, 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 it doesn't satisfy anymore. Yeah, don't satisfy. It's, it's a means deeper. to an end. It's a means to an end. It's always bigger. It's always bigger. So when I was a Jehovah's Witness for 40 years, I did not know, even though in my mind, I thought that was the only reality, the ultimate reality. We know Jehovah. Nobody else knows Jehovah. That's the true God. Nobody's praying to the true God. We don't believe in a Trinity. We don't celebrate Christmas. We had all these ideals, but little did I know that had nothing to do with loving my neighbor as myself. That just made me right intellectually. And it separated me. And, and then the other teaching was what you said. Everyone has to die <clears throat> in Jehovah's Witnesses. Everyone has to be genocided because they will not know the name of Jehovah. And, and or at I, least you're not one of us if you don't yes. see it that way. And I, and I don't think people... You're dead to us. Yes. And, and I don't think, Dennis, people take time to realize what the hell religion is saying to them. My religion was all painted out beautifully, <clears throat> painted beautiful. It was a whitewashed grave is what it was because everybody had to be genocide. So our religion taught only those who call in the name of Jehovah will be saved. And so what does that mean for everyone else? Well, what it meant from the Jehovah's Witness perspective is that Jehovah was going to kill everybody. It was going to be a bloodbath. He was a narcissistic God that you could only reach him by calling his name. Now, this is, this is the other side of it. You know, this isn't me getting my butt into paradise, which is Christianity too. I got to get my butt to heaven. You know, it's it's all the same, right? Here's your little carrot. Now do what we say. So, so it's interesting that I forget what I was going to say about the witnesses in that perspective. But <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. don't you hate that when that happens? That's, That's okay. <laughs> but but anyway, you know, the spirit broke me out of that little box I was in and gave me gave me that under, other understanding. So I moved from I'm going to get into paradise and I'm going to have a beautiful house. But what we didn't realize is that everyone is going to be genocide. It, it's going to be a bloodbath. The birds, the great big feast, they're going to feast on all the dead bodies. And, and we're going to get to live in these houses that these people built, these big mansions. We're in Christianity. It's like we're going to go to heaven and you're going to go to hell. It's all the same. You know what I mean? It doesn't really matter. Yeah. And so I think eventually, like Angela said, you begin awakening you, you know, like my awakening was going to a door and I go to this big mansion, this big, beautiful house, big steps, big open doors. And there's these four, three little four girls holding up a dollar bill with big smiles on their face. And we got our watchtower and awake, you know, and this door swings open and I see this massive living room, this beautiful table, beautiful kids, beautiful lady standing behind her kids. So well, proud really of them. nicely. And, you know, and, and. They go here and we go, okay, thank you. Are you giving that to us? Yes, that's for your work. And we go, thank you. And then, so I'm digging in my mag in my book bag and I'm giving them magazines and they're like, no, 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 no. No, just give those to somebody else who needs them. And I, and I got in the car, I walked away from that door and I said, Jehovah, how could you kill these people? Who are these people? Why do they have a nice home? And my car's out here leaking a quart of oil on the sidewalk. And, you know, and they sure seem happy. And who are all these people with nice cars and nice homes and nice? <clears throat> so I started to wake up. I started to wake up. Man, Lord, you're a genocide God. You're a, you're a man. that <clears throat> If you don't know his name correctly, you don't say Jehovah, you're going to kill. But yet you felt the sense that they're God. They're living a godly life, this family. They're blessed by God. They're meticulously dressed, clean, polite, fine, giving, supportive, smiling, joy in their faces. It's like, really, Lord, you're going to genocide? You know, Jehovah, you're going to genocide these people? Like, that doesn't make sense. And so Dan really started his inner GPS, if you will, the Holy Spirit inside was pricking him. Like, what's going on? So that's, <clears throat> that's what I call an immaculate conception, to have a bigger picture a bigger understanding. The Holy Spirit starts removing blinders from your eyes. And, and then shortly after, we, we visited 200 Christian churches. 
And it was the same message. Believe in Jesus or genocide. He's going to genocide the Hindus. He's going to genocide the Indians. He's going to genocide all the Muhammads. He's going to, and then Muhammad's going to genocide all the Christians because the Christians uh, worship the mediator instead of Allah God. And it goes on and on, like you said, Daniel, or I'm sorry, Dennis, yes. that religions divide. And I think the Christ, the anointing, the spirit of truth pulls us out of separation. If the if here's the truth, if the spirit of truth or the Christos, the Christ, however you want to call it, the great I am, if that's truly lodged in our mind, our mind will be universal. We will love the Muslim. We will love the Buddhist. We will love the Tibetan. We will see them absolutely like us. When I was a Jehovah's Witness, did I deserve to be destroyed because I was in a false belief, because I was in a limited belief? I, I'm going to start saying that from now on that Jehovah's Witnesses is a limiting belief. Christianity, limiting belief. B Buddhism, Hinduism, they're, they're all limiting. You know why? Because they're all, a they're not the all. They're a piece of the all. And so the all is, is unlimited. The all is, is beyond mind. And so all we can do is see pieces of it. And I think for me and Angela, we've become explorers. I think after you come out of a cult after you've come out of a religion and then you you, you look back you see all the boxes I, i'm a christian i'm a buddhist i'm a hindu i'm a yeah because... and, and i'm thinking no you, you now you're saying you're a limitation because if who you are is made in the image and likeness of god then you have a universal mind of infinite possibilities but once you collapse in and say i am a it's over it's kind of like the matrix there's all this energy coming down and all this understanding that wants to come into this temple and but we say i'm a christian or i'm i'm a jehovah's witness by god and and that's what i believe well all of a sudden the the, the infinite possibilities go like this and they're like okay live that out so we live out this this religion until it no longer like angela says serves us go ahead angela. yeah it's almost like a whole bunch of channels you know of belief systems and you, you collapse in on one and all these other ones go away. So you're going to just live this one channel and never know the other ones because you're limited, but yet God has these infinite other, you know, parts of himself. And, but we, we look at it like, but you're not like me. So I don't like you. You don't look like me. So I don't like you. You know, it's funny. Dan and I were doing a, a job the other day and it was a job that it was hard and it was heavy and it was a lot, but, it was also, anyway, so the guy, he didn't think it was as much as it was, but he, I know in the end he realized, oh my gosh, these guys had to work their butts off to do this. We knew that he didn't, he, he doesn't know what we have to do, but he saw in the end, but we worked diligently. We worked to perfection. We, we worked and we gave our all and we did it with great gusto, with great joy of doing it for four hours to install it back in um and it was a huge kitchen and then a big bathroom and it was heavy wood like your wood um and maybe that's not heavy but that's maple isn't it we have the same in our house i can't believe yourself. it yeah that's beautiful um but anyway we're doing it and you know what their hearts just kind of i don't know they softened and softened we were giving our all it was like we we're in service to god right and i just kept saying lord help me to be the light in this situation help my light just to permeate this room i, I just bless that woman i bless that man I, I just pray that lord that light would just touch them somehow and and, and just maybe just cause them to be open a little bit and so because they're mormons okay they're mormons and they, they've been Mormons a long, long time. These guys have been married like 50 years probably and elderly and they're getting in their years. And so anyway, we got all done. And then the lady says to me, she says, um, so what religion did you say you are again? And the last time when we first met and we talked a long time about all this stuff we're talking about right now. And, um, but she didn't remember what I had said. So I was like, no, you know, really, we're not any one particular religion. And then she says, but Christian, right? And I'm like, well, yeah. And I said, you know, because I believe that Jesus is uh, the Lord, Lord and Savior. I believe he died for our, our sins. So in that way, I would say I'm a Christian. But then beyond that, though, I've come to realize is that all the religions, God, God loves all people. And I like, for example, I said, Paramahansa Yogananda, for example, he has seen Jesus numerous times. And St. Francis of Assisi saw Jesus Christ in the flesh all the time, many, 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 many times. And so he's Catholic, 
you know, Paramahansa Yogananda, Hindu, like you know, and, and, and so anyway, um, Sri Yuktisvar and Babaji and all this, they've all seen Jesus too. Well, okay. So then um, I said, so I believe that God loves all people. And she says, you know something? She says, I believe that God loves all people too. All the, all the different people. I'm like, great. This is great. And I'm so glad. So maybe all my job was is to secure that belief because I believe that I did. And then God showed me something when I left that, that night. I was thinking about it, and all of a sudden, he reminded me that the Mormons are big into when you become a believer in a Mormon church that you have an experience with Jesus, like he appears to you. I didn't remember that, but then I realized why he caused me to say Parmahans Yogananda saw Jesus, and so did uh, uh, St. Francis of Assisi, and that's the only two I mentioned, but I said that I've come to realize that God loves all people. And, and so, and she says, I believe that too. Now, what are the odds that a Mormon would believe that? How did she come to, to see that? I don't really know, but all I know is, is that she's got questions and she, she wondered, why are these people giving so much to us? Why are they being so generous with their time? We went and fixed everything else for free and in their house and glad to do it and you know show them how to do this show them how to do that we gave our all and so they so saw, that spoke louder than any yeah that was i'm the, a whatever yeah that's the action it's the intention of love and, and then i hugged her in the end and i and i gave her a big old hug in the end and um and they were both deeply touched by us because they couldn't understand like dan with the woman um on that beautiful mansion home with the beautiful girls and cute little dresses rich obviously blessed obviously well, these people are saying, well, these guys are not Mormon, but look how much they're giving to us, like as if we're their, you know, special relative. And why are they being so loving and kind and giving an extra and beyond? Why? And and they wonder, we judge these people as being nothing. I don't know if you know that about Mormons, but to them, anybody outside of their faith is nothing and uh, might as well be dead like Jehovah's Witnesses. You're dead. You're dead to, to us. You're not a Mormon. And that's how they see it. And, and in this state, they cheat people that are not Mormons. If you work for them, you're not a Mormon, you will be cheated Some somehow. Them. Some they're going to work their Some hardest. Them, not, all of them. not all of them. But a lot of times they figure out a way. So not all. There's not good all. In every There's, good. There's always good in every religion. Absolutely. So you're right. I'm just wrong about that. But we've seen plenty enough because we're not one of them. That's the problem. You know? Anyway. So I like this non-division. I like it how God's changing my heart to see everyone as a spark of God and divinity in them. That's God's breath in them. It's his life force energy in them. And that part of them, I love. And God's a lot of times caused me to see the beauty in the, in the most vilest of persons, where I see something really great. I could see that. I could see that God uh, about them. And yeah. I don't know, he helped for me, he's helped me to be able to see that. And most everybody, I don't think there's anybody I could say, I don't see that. I could see God in them. But then I see they're acting out in this non-God way about them. That's the ego part of them. It's not really who they are at all. So I could love that real essence of them in each and every person, no matter how bad, including Hitler, you know, because he had a good part of him too. And Manson. And he, he said, well, I, I'm good. Really, I am. And I'm like, oh, God, of course you are. You have some good parts about you, but you've got some really bad part where you do these really other, other awful things. But yet I, I see I see that. I see that, you know, and uh, it's like, I don't know. It's so are we kind of hitting on the question day or uh, I'm Dennis. sorry, Dennis, I don't know why I got Dave in my head. But Dennis, are we kind of hitting on round about what you're trying to get to? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I, I think it's a, it's a, my question was a big question that it can't be answered just in one sentence. And, uh, the solution to it, uh, requires us to find it, requires us to keep digging, to keep trying to see what one can do. Uh, there is no, just a switch where you can push and everything will be done. But, um, you know, looking at, th th there is a, this parable of Jesus about a good Samaritan. Yes. And he talked about a good neighbor. Who is your neighbor? Religion, the, many times they, 
in churches, they like quoting that parable and they will, they will just use it for their benefits. But when you look at it, actually Jesus tried to say, your neighbor is not someone that you belong to the same religion or to the same beliefs or to the same anything. Uh, this traveler who came and land, landed into Lobaras and, and they robbed him, they beaten him. He was rescued by a Samaritan who has nothing to do with him, who doesn't, who didn't ask first, what is your religion? Who didn't ask what is your nationality? Who didn't ask what is, you know, he was not interested in, in identities that we, we acquire when we, we come to this world. But when religion is using it, somehow a neighbor becomes someone that you belong to the same beliefs, to the same church. And I, I think that's what all tyrants use, even religion and politics and all tyrants of all kinds. What they do is that they want to create a group of neighbors and someone who is outside is an outcast. And this is, I think, this is what is bringing misery to our world. And that's what keeps people in cults. Because when you run away from, from let's say, Jehovah Witness in your case, and you come out, being having been in a region, the first people you will learn to, it's people who belong to another church, let's say evangelicals, let's say protestants. You will go to those people because you are, you are rooted into this religion, into religious things. So you believe good people, they must be religious. The moment you go to these people, yes, they will sympathize with you. First, they will understand that, yes, we are sorry about that experience that you experienced in uh, Jehovah Witnesses. You know, we are sorry, we are sympathizing with you. The next thing is come and belong to us in order to have uh, the, 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 the much needed sympathy that you are looking for, the comfort, the love, come and belong to us. At the moment you go to belong to, to, to them, again, they are isolating you from the rest of the world and they are putting you into their box and they start indoctrinating you with their, with their dogmas and their understandings and you lose everything. So um, to me, the question that, that, that really puzzles me is how these cultic leaders, be it religious, be it politi politicians, be it cultural, be it tribal, be it racial, manage to isolate us and uh, separate us from the rest of the world. And therefore, we are depending on them and these small groups that they created. I think uh, Angela, she was talking about, uh, there is a show that I thought she was talking about unconscious resentment, something like that. Unconscious resentment. Oh, oh yes. Uh-huh. I wrote that book. So, you know, first they recruit you, you join that particular group. In the journey, you find out that these things are not good. It's a cult. But you say, if I leave this place, where do I go? Who is ready to listen to me? Who will listen? Because one thing they do is tell you, outside here, nobody is going to listen to you. Here you can be heard, honored. So, and, and their power, they obtain their power from our individual power that we put together and we, we, we hand it to, to, these, to, to, to these cultic leaders. 
my power, your power, our individual power collectively, we hand it to them. So it becomes huge. So they tell you from here, there's nowhere to go. And other people that you could learn to, also they have another cultic leader who got hold of them in order to get their sympathy and love and everything, you will have to subscribe to their cultic beliefs without, uh, and so individually, we lost our energy, we lost our power, we, we lost our personality and our capacity. We, we, we take our powers, we give it to, to, to those organizations then. So, um, I think if anything can be done, first of all, uh, I would like to hear what you say, but individually, I, I think if the sensitization should be focused on reaching out to individual, maybe not telling them to live religion, but to say, hey, to love someone, you, you don't have to belong to the same belief or same culture or same political party or same anything. If you are hearing someone, uh, he's saying he's learning, a, he has abandoned Jehovah Witness or Mormonism or offer love, offer care without first telling that person to join anything that you belong to. Because probably the, the most thing that he wants is not to be recruited into something else. He wanted to be and to be loved. So once people, wherever they belong, they get to understand that we can offer love, we can offer care, we can give a listening ear to someone without recruiting him to our groups that we belong to. That That's we right. are yet to wake up and see that actually we are in another cult. If we learn how to listen to each other without first trying to recruit, that way I can help you who is running away. And in the end later, maybe I will learn to you for help when I discover that actually I've been to another cult because when you tell some people that you are running away from cult, they think you are running from a cult, but they don't know that they are in a cult themselves. Right. That's they don't, they don't. Yes, and at the time, to listen to you, they want you first to join their cult. And if you can't, then there is no room for discussion or listening to you. So you get isolated. And the time for them when they will discover that they are in a cult, they don't have anyone to run to because the only person they could they could run to is you who who came, and they tried to recruit you into their cult. You refused. They are no longer in touch with you, and now they want to run away from the same cult. They have no one to listen to them. Right. So, it's so sad. Yes. So but, but, so. You know, but you know, Dennis. Thank God, we all. I always say this. We all have the same God to turn to. You know what I mean? And maybe that's the lesson. Do you know what I mean? Because when you when you get out of something like that and you have no one that you could talk to at all and no one wants to hear it, um, but they're against you and they shut the doors, they won't answer your calls, whatever. And you've got no one, you're all alone. But, you, but each and every one of us have one thing that's on our side. If we could just manage to believe it. But I think in the heart of who we are, we do know that that God is for us because I did it too. I thought, I was told it. God was mad at me and angry with me and disgusted with me and I'm, multiple I'm a, religions. And then Dan, same thing. He was told in his religion, when you leave, Jehovah hates you. You know, he's disappointed you. You're in Satan's world now and all this kind of stuff. Both of us had the experience of turning to God anyway. How did we know to do it? But we did. We knew to cry out to God and, and he helped us each one of us. And, but yet we've been brainwashed to believe that God is disgusted with us but we knew to go there and that's where all the true answers come from anyway. So maybe that's a beautiful thing when we're stuck with nowhere else to go. Uh, and, but then we cry out to God and then everything changes everything. And that's what happened to me. That's what happened to Dan. And I don't know if that has happened to you probably, but 
or about ready to or whatever, but that's what we have nowhere else to go. But that's a beautiful thing. I don't know, but it is, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so so uh, in few years that I have already spent on this planet, uh, I'm around 37 years. How, how old? No, 70. 37. 37 years. Oh, 37. 37. Okay. Uh, one of the most challenging is the is these different groups that try to capture you and make turn turn you into their properties, being cultural, race, uh, political parties, and religious. And so, having worked because when you come to this world, yeah, you want this sense of belonging, and in looking for this sense of belonging, that's where these predators catch you. That's where, that's where they get you. They say, you want to belong, so we got you. And when they get you, you become a, their property. So having worked into many things wanted to, to own me, but up to now, I have decided I don't belong to, 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 to anyone to to tell me who to love and who to hate. Amen. It's a great place to be, Dennis. I like that's a good place. Yeah, and and you know, Dennis, you're you're now becoming our friend. We're your friend. So we have friends, but they're they're all around the world. They're not in group think. They're you know they're out of the box. Okay. Our friends are in South Africa. Universal. I had another person just write me from South Africa um, on my YouTube channel. Yeah. So so we have friends all over the world that are are coming to this more enlightened state of, oh my God, look at the traps, look at the boxes, look at the conditions, look at them reading these scriptures, like uh, like you said, the, which was the one with the uh, Good Samaritan, but yet they don't live it. You know, we walk into a million Christian churches and you feel the judgment. And if you say one thing they don't agree with, you get the look. And we've been kicked out of churches, you know, because we couldn't express an opinion. Oh, maybe we live more than one life. Don't you ever say that again in our church, huh? You know, and we've been in we've been in about two hundred churches, and we're like you. We realize we didn't fit in. We never will fit in, and we don't want to fit in. Now I'm going to tell you what happens. Do you want me to talk a little more? Or did you have a little more to say? Yeah, you can talk a little more. So here, here's here's what's going to happen. As you continue to say truth and integrity are my compass. You are now beginning to worship in spirit and truth. That is an energy field. It doesn't follow anybody. It follows the Christ, the anointing, the way of truth. Come follow me, cut off your family. You know, in a sense, right? I mean, cut off your, needing your neediness for being to be in a group to be accepted because where the christ mind the non-linear the truth that sets us free makes the whole world our family not just these tiny self-righteous groups that have a form of godly devotion but prove wrong to its power you know, they have a form. They, they look religious. They dress religious. They talk religious. We tithe. We have Bible studies. We read scripture. But do you love? Can you love your neighbor as yourself? Can you give us a, a neighbor a hand up that doesn't believe like you? Or do you say, well, they're not a Christian. They don't deserve any help at all. And not, not any help whatsoever. You know, that mind of Christ. I'm going to tell you something. The Christos, the mind of Christ, the anointing, the great anointing. Jesus' last name wasn't Christ. It was Jesus the Christ, the anointed of God, okay? Now, what comes with that is God power. So you're asking, okay, at this maybe part of your journey, you're kind of like, why is this so? Why? It's the way it is. It's the way it is. Churches are group think. Churches are self-righteous. Churches are all separated with, within and amongst themselves. They're divided. They're a house divided within themselves. 
There's 200 churches, Christian churches, and none of them can agree on a damn thing. And it's the same in Buddhism. There's a million levels of Buddhism. There's a million levels of, I had to have God wipe all that out. I had to have him to shake me upside down and say, we're getting rid of all this religious stuff. We're getting rid of all this spirituality. And I said to God, build my temple on truth, not on falsehood, not on groupthink, not on neediness, not on, I'm going to get this thing off here, this pop-up popped up, and not on neediness, not on this. I don't want to fit in. I don't want to be groupthink. I don't want to be like this. This is bullshit. This divides. This kills. We've been killing each other for our truth. What the hell is that? I have the truth that I'm going to kill you if you don't have it. Jesus is going to kill you if you don't have it. Jehovah's going to kill you if you don't have it. Muhammad's going to kill you if you don't have it. It goes on and on and on. And like I said, we're all breathing the same air. We all were birthed here immaculately. I did not bring myself here. Where did I come from? Where is Dan from? Where is the spirit of Dan from? Where did it come from? It wasn't sitting in my mother's body its whole life. Somebody birthed me here as a possibility, Dennis, you, me, Angela, were all possibilities to bring forth like the Matrix, right? You remember the Matrix movie? Did you watch it? He goes down the birth yeah. canal and, and he sees here's all these other people living in the altered reality. And yet there's all these babies, you and me, the Christos, that Neo gets to wake up to. And he says, Morpheus, what are all these? Oh, those were all the possibilities. Those are all people that are walking in the separation and the, you know, I hate them because they don't believe like me. And so the possibility is that we'll transcend that. And here's what me and Angela have found, Dennis. As you choose the Christ, as you choose to be anointed, as you choose to be rebuilt, as you choose to tear down this infrastructure willingly, that's why Jesus said, as I was crucified, you would be crucified. Another false teaching in, 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 the, in the church that says, I just done it all for you. You need to do nothing. See, we have to allow the, the lower nature, this, this separate self, to be crucified. We've seen enough. We've seen enough of the killing. We've seen enough of the cape. We've seen enough of, I like you only if you're like me. We've had enough. We want the truth at all costs. I want truth or let me die. Let me get out of here. Give me the truth. Give me the damn truth. The spirit will give you the truth and it will ask you to die to former beliefs systems and you must die. And it's painful. They're infrastructures. There's what we, they, we've we held on to our whole life. I'm a Christian. I'm a this. I'm a that. No, you're an infinite being. You're an infinite possibility. Now, here's the beauty. As we continue to worship walk, however you want to call it, wanting truth, yearning for truth, seeking truth, not, not all of these talking heads that are telling you this is how you believe. You're now talking directly to whatever you want to call it, the Holy Spirit, your great I am, your higher self, I don't care. But there's a yearning for truth beyond the bullshit. There's got to be another reason for me to be here than to be in a damn religion and hate all these people out here. There's got to be something else. What happens in that is an energy field begins to be built up in you. Powerful, mm. powerful, powerful. Right, Angela? Yes. Powerful energy field. You will walk into a room and you'll say these, these walls could collapse. You'll feel an energy. I walked into a room. I think I might have told you. Me and Angela walked into a uh, way of mastery class, channeled book based on Course in Miracles, woke up early in the morning. A lot of sadness in there, Dennis. A lot of sadness, a lot of split minds, a lot of compartmentalization. And a lot of people had died. A lot of people died. Of it. Confusion. They, the, the, the Course says you got to believe all of it or none of it. So we would go in there and kind of ground these people. You don't, you don't have to believe all of it. If you believe all of it and you really don't believe it, you're operating out of split mind, compartmentalization. Uh, you're on your way to schizophrenia. Well, we saw several people on their way to schizophrenia. And they died. We saw so many. We saw so many die. So many got dementias. Literally. So I walked in there. Me and Angela walked in there. And I said, what in the hell? Uh, check this out. This is the truth. There was a power inside of me that could level those walls. <clears throat> it was the anointing. 
And I said, what is this? You know, what is this? Yikes. I mean, it flattened. It just showed me like a nuclear bomb. Like, And all of a sudden, people started running up to me. One of the teachers ran up to me. And he said, Dan, something's wrong in here. Something's wrong in here. I said, Jim, you've been in here too long. Get out. Get out of here. And there was other people doing that. We had a little bit of a talk. I said, you've been in this book too long. There was another teacher named Bud that had been teaching it 25 years. I think Jim, too. Yeah. And Bud was an author. He had written several books. He, he went around speaking he all, taught over all over the world. <laughs> and I'm in there with this group and I'm a guest. But there was some kind of anointing, something on me, man, when I went in there. <clears throat> and this blind guy held up their book like this and says, what does this mean? I'm, I'm confused. They were all going into states of confusion. And my right hand reached over and grabbed that book <clears throat> and said, you know, when you guys are done with this shit, you might know something. And I threw it down. And that was not me. It was some kind of righteous indignation. It was something in me that says, I'm tired of the suffering. It's the same yearning that's growing in you. I don't want to be a part of separation. I don't want to be a part of this dividing. It's the anointing. Now, I got to tell you, about a month later, I called one of the guys because we weren't a regular participant in the group. And I called him and I said, hey, you know, how's the group going? And he said, there is no more group. The group was dissolved that day. I wasn't trying to dissolve it. I didn't go in there with the intention to do anything other than live from the truth, speak from the truth. And God let him there. And it gets more morning. powerful. So I, I, I'm i like, I says, well, what, what do you guys do? He says, we just bring in a little book, not that book, <clears throat> but a book. And we discuss it. It's a, it's a discussion group. And then he told me this. He said, do you know, Bud? And I said, yeah. He said, we almost freaked out, but he looked out at the group. And he says, if we've read this book more than once, we've read it too much. This was a major teacher. They dropped it. They dropped it. <clears throat> he used to get mad at Dan and I because we would go in there always. Where's always, your book? Without Where's your our book? book. And because we weren't studying it, but they all were. They, they had it marked more than any Bible. It was more than anybody I've ever seen. You know, you've seen people, their Bibles are all marked up, right? Well, th these are more marked up than any high up Christian that's been in there for 40 years. And you're like, whoa. And so they they literally put that book away. That's huge. That was it. And, they, and they did not like us because we wouldn't study. We would just come in there and they're like, what, well, then what are you doing in here then? Because we weren't serious like them, but that's how they looked at it. But yet we were there and their book said that uh if that there's no accidents basically bottom line it meant it's a little differently worded but there can be no accident so if dan and angela are here they were meant to be here and that so they always would keep that in mind yeah they would that say we that were there i'd say well you can't be in the wrong purpose. place your book says that right right it says you can't be in the wrong place then i'm meant to be here because they they'd want me to leave and I'd say, well, I'm supposed to be here, right? And they really to hated book. me. I was, I was pretty fundamentalist Christian at that time. <laughs> but so. that's what I want to say is that the anointing, the Christos, the Christ will begin to possess you. It will begin to take over to where what I speak, the Father speaks. That is what takes us from glory to greater glory. That's what feeds me and Angela now. That's what keeps, that's our life support. That's, we don't need a church. We're self-sufficient. God has given us supply, given us everything we could ever ask for, really. Our cup runneth over, live on a beautiful river. Um, you, you know, we have nice vehicles. I'm not saying that that's what we are trying to get, but we are being taken care of. We don't need a damn church. We don't need to be right. We don't need to tickle each other's ears. We don't need to play around in these things. I want to play with, with the universal mind. I want to be connected with the universal mind. I want to be connected with the great I am. This is small stuff. This is petty. This is children that have to hang out in groups, you know? So I'm enjoying now being or allowing that light to shine through me and, and to just show up. And so we show up. When somebody asks us to talk, we show up. When, when we feel inspired to go to a church, we show up. And, and I want to tell you, Dennis, that isn't the only time. I'm not going to talk about all the incidences where the Crisos has kicked in in the middle of a church. And literally yeah. done damage. Right. Good damage. Which is, Good damage. Which is funny. Now that I think about it, that's what Jesus was always doing all the time. You know, making the, Shaking it up. the Pharisees and the Sadducees mad all the time because they're always trying to, I don't know, 
get people to do things that were really against God's laws. They had added dogma and men's laws to it all and put burdens on the people. And then they weren't doing it themselves and preventing them from entering the kingdom within with God and having a relationship and trying to make themselves God, you know? So I think it's, it's interesting that God has us kind of doing the same kind of thing. It's really interesting to me, but you know, you'll be, you'll be guided. Yes, absolutely. And the go you want to say, well, ju just simply that, you know what I just realized is that, um, God, he's wanting us to, to spend a little bit more time, I feel, instead of trying to go out and save everybody and get everyone um, involved and, you know, to get, know this truth guy, you know, I think more important is that we focus on letting God fill us so much that we're like the energizer bunny, not that we're going around in energy, not that, but that we're glowing and that it spreads out and it touches Anybody who's in our presence, like we knew this guy, David R. Hawkins, he was an amazing guy. He wrote a lot of books like uh, Eye of the Eye and um, Power Versus Force. And he, he's really amazing. He's dead now. But um, he literally would be in a room and people's colds and sicknesses would just disappear. And because that, that power of God of love, it was just pure love is all it was, was just permeating that room and people would just naturally come out of the audience and just sit all around him on the on the podium i mean i'm sorry on the stage and just want to be near him and nobody stopped like at them. the feet of christ i mean yeah. he, he'd go into metal wards with with schizophrenia gone yeah you know because of the love was so intense that was raiding us the love of christ the love of the christos yeah, and that's the us. goal that's the goal rather than we got to get out there and tell tell like words like outside words it speaks and it, and it speaks i'm going to tell you uh dennis it speaks we we had a lady one time in a church just turn around because we were sharing in this place what we're talking about here what we talk about here we'll talk about at any fundamentalist church we talk about the Christos. We talk about, you know what I mean? Wherever God says Most of them to. don't want to hear it. They want to hear about, here's how we believe. And, you know, but we, we, when we go into a place, we don't go in to be taught. We don't go in to listen to a pastor. We go in to share what we're talking about right here. And we talk about it very boldly at times. I mean, literally boldly. Well, we'll grab a mic out of the guy's hand that won't give it to us. And we'll talk over their microphone. Because how they pass them around the microphone in yeah, Bible study. You know, they'll avoid us, you know. They'll avoid us sometimes because they know that Dan's going to say something they don't want to hear. But but we did have, <laughs> I'm going to say just this, I'll abbreviate it. But we spoke up in a church of 500 at a thing. And we were just having some dialogue back and forth. But the pastor was shaming the people telling them they needed to do more. They were children. He was they, a new pastor. He was yeah. a new pastor. And I said, why are you talking to people this way? You know, I got them like, why are you talking to people? This big, you know, 500 is a big thing. I said, well, why are you beating these people down? And I said, you know what? I'm going to come up and tear some of the pages out of that book you're reading out of because you're, you're using it as a tool to beat these people up. And anyway, this kind of went on for a couple of weeks. And what he didn't, what he probably didn't realize too, we were visitors, but he knew that we were, but we'd been there many, many times. And they had a previous pastor in a Lutheran church. You can only go, I don't know, seven years. And then you're forced to step down. So he was in, you know, he was forced. And so this new guy come in, well, he had really helped these people to mature in the Lord. They were el more elderly people in this church and they were very getting strong in the Lord. And they were, but they were praying for this new pastor and this young kid, they wanted young blood. They wanted yeah, young blood, they said. So they got this guy in and a boy, he's, he's right, him down. just beating him down. I'm like, whoa. So the Christos in me said, no, he said, stop it. Stop beating them down. Stop feeding them bullshit. Stop telling them lies. Stop hurting these people. And so he didn't listen. And so anyway, there was a, a, a little bit of a confrontation. Um, I chased him down at the end of the service. And I just told him, you know, I'm not trying to hurt your or destroy your service. But, you know, what you're saying. And he goes, well, Dan, you, you talk some crazy stuff. You talk about surrendering on the altar and, you know, this and that, blah, 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 blah. You know, and anyway, long story short, he said, Dan, something. Now, now see, this spoke to him. The truth spoke to him and he said, something has happened to you. I don't know how it happened. He was saying something good. Something good happened to me. But he says, mm -hmm. I can't do it. I don't know how to. I don't know how to help these people in my own church. To get this. And he walked away in like a shame. We didn't see him but two years later. Now, I'll say one more thing that happened in that church. Some lady heard this dialogue come going down, right? And she was standing ahead of us, right, Angela? Yeah, we're out, so we're out in the lobby out now the lobby. after after the Bible study, and um, 
Yes. And the and the lady just flipped around and she grabbed my face and she's like, Who are you? Just looked into my eyes. Who are you that can, you know, like can share like this, that can talk? So no, it was more like this in the way because I saw okay, this okay. happening. It was more like, Are you Jesus? Are you <clears throat> Jesus in there? Is that Jesus? Is that you? That is what I saw. It was something that profound. Yes. And she was grabbing, like holding my face right next to hers, wanting to see because I'm not trying to brag on Dan. It, I'm just saying it that's spoke what she with clarity, it spoke with truth. This is the glory to greater glory. This is what we want, not the group think. And so after that, two years later, we saw that pastor. We never went back to the church after that day. And two years later, <clears throat> that guy saw us. We were at a mall. We a were restaurant. at a mall at a restaurant. And some guy is literally running and hurtling over the chairs and, and coming. And I thought, I wonder what that guy yeah, it was. A, it was a fenced in area that day. And there's all these tables. There's restaurant outside seating. And he's literally running to go over the tables to get to the edge of the fence. Dan, Dan, Dan. Yeah. And he, and I'm like, I wonder who that guy is. And I said, do, you, do, we, you right I said, do we know you? And he's like, yeah, I knew who he was. I'm, I'm the pastor at that church. And I said, oh, he goes, where have you been? Where have you been? We missed you. And I said, well, you know, we just visit around. We just go different places. And and he, we had the most wonderful, but see, it didn't hurt him, Dennis. It didn't hurt him. The truth was setting him free. Will, will we die to our false self to allow this truth to come through, to set people free? If we want to set people free, the truth in us, the truth that's coming from God that wants us all to realize we're children of God, we're all the same. We're all the same. Like you said, no matter what, you were born into this religion, that religion, that puts us all on an equal field. we got to transcend it. But go ahead, Dennis. I know you have some more to say. Yeah, sure. Um, I appreciate this conversation. It was really very constructive. Um, it's horrific how really we have given up the power that we have within ourselves and handed them to to others to organizations to and then they are using it against us yes um well, I, I think nobody actually should be like if you get the truth if you get good understanding you should be paying attention to these groups because Men of personalities that they they claim to be representing, they have no resemblance of them. Uh, let's talking about Christianity. If Jesus would walk into any of church and say, "Here I am," nobody they, they can't accept him. They right. cannot. Right. All they know is just to claim we, we believe in him because he's not there anyway. They, they are not seeing him. He's, but if he would walk in like the way it is portrayed in the Bible that Pharisees rejected him and these churches, what they do rejects the core uh, principles of what Jesus taught. He taught if you if you love those who love you, then it's not something special. What is special is to reach out to those that you think they don't love. But all groups that claimed for him, all they do, they say, no, we want a unity of the church as long as you belong to this particular group of ours. Yeah, conditional, right? Not unconditional. Yes. So, um, what I think, I, I, I think this understanding is is is, is spreading very fast out of knowing that you no, know, we should be universally a community of people who can offer love, who can love each other, without necessarily being in the same pot. Yes. yes. Right. But, yes, but. The issue that I'm still seeing is that 
I get the, this understanding, you get that, that understanding, someone else gets this understanding, but we are scattered around. And this, what I may call evil force, though it's not evil force, but people with uh, not enlightened mind, they are united in isolating people. So a big number of our fellows are isolated in these groups. We who get enlightened, who get to know that, no, uh, to love Daniel, love Angela, we don't have to belong to, to, to be in the same pot, to, to, to first to, to get a pen and a paper and we tick. Yes, we agree on this, we agree on this, we agree on this, and we say, okay, we are we, we understand these things the same way, so therefore we can be together. So we who have this understanding that we can be human beings, offer love as we can, offer spiritual support, uh, psychological support, and you know, being there and being a neighbor without belonging to the same pot. We are becoming many, but scattered. Yes. But so, so yeah, so that's what I think um, we will continue to explore how we can get united and, you know, we get this community that don't dictate to one what you, you believe, who to love, who to hate, who to accommodate, who to reject, so that this community get together and, you know, so that even others who want to learn away from these isolated groups, cultic groups, can know that, no, there is a community where I, I can go and belong. So, so th this is something that um, I feel is my, 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 my burden or if it's a yeah. burden or I don't know what it's, but <laughs> what I think the rest of my life I want to do to, to, to have this community where someone finds himself without uh, signing up to their to, to any of what I believe or what I, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, thank you so much. I, I, I think I would request that at, at least once a month we should have like this discussion and we talk and. Yes. And I want to say something, Dennis, that where you're at is perfectly normal. It's frustrating. It is a burden. I've had the burden. I got to tell you, you know, they're saying we're in this great awakening, right? I go, I don't know. They are building mega churches all around us here in Boise, Idaho. Big churches hold 3,000 people. Cameras. There's this new church coming up called Awaken Church. They're, they're popping up like McDonald's everywhere. And I know what they teach, separation. And, uh, and so I think, okay. You know, everyone says we're in the great awakening, but you know what? I'm going to tell you something. I have become satisfied. If God only awakens me, that's good enough for me. Meaning, I don't mean that selfishly. I am not trying to get to heaven. I'm not trying to get to paradise earth. I'm not trying to get anywhere. I'm here because God has me here. I didn't bring myself here. I just want to be a light in a dark world. And Dr. David Hawkins said, when we go to the universal mind, when we want truth at all costs, when we're willing to abandon ourselves for truth, we go from a flashlight to a laser. So I'm willing to say, God, use me, use your laser light. And what God has done in me to alleviate my burden has helped me, Dennis, to move into understanding. Like when I was a Jehovah's Witness, it was like being in kindergarten. I know how to say my ABCs, A, B, C, D, E, you know, and that was religion, right? And then <laughs> you go, you, there's another level of school besides kindergarten. Oh, yeah, now we're going to take those words and we're going to make sentences. 
Huh? What's a sentence? See, this is this is religion. It, it gets bigger. But but I had a spiritual teacher tell me one time. He said the apple falls from the tree when the apple falls from the tree when it's ripe. We don't make that happen. So I'm at the point now, Dennis, where I just show up. God will tell me to go to a Course in Miracles or go here or walk into that church. I'm telling you, it's spirit directed. It ain't me. But I'm a yeah. willing. I'm willing. Here I am as your light. Here I am. Send me. Send me to stop this separation. And I realized that, you know, I mean, when I was a witness, I loved being a witness. 40 years, I loved it. I, I live from it. The Christian, oh man, I believe in Jesus and my life is perfect now. And they live from it. There's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do. Here's the thing that bothers me about spirituality. Spirituality tells everybody, if you just believe in the I am, that's it. It's over. There, there, people got to live out these illusions. I had to live out that yeah. illusion of Jehovah's Witness. The Christian has to live out that illusion of separation. Eventually, you know, his, his daughter will become a Buddhist or will become gay. Now what? Your religion says, hate them. They're going to be destroyed. But your heart says, I love them anyway. <clears throat> and so that religion that served you now becomes a means to an end. Jehovah's Witnesses was a means to an end. So when we look at it from a mature perspective, we say all of these things that people are living in are a means to an end. Why is one guy in another country eating out of a trash dumpster? Why is another guy wake up into alcoholism? Why is another kid getting raped when he's a baby? Why are women sold into prostitution and trafficking? You know, this is big. It's bigger than religion. But I am asked, and I know you are too, because you are awakened, Dennis. You're awakening. You're grieving. That's the heart of Christ that is grieving for all mankind. You're saying, stop it, stop it, stop it. The next thing that happens is you put voice to it voice, heart, the heart will become activated. It's more hundred times, thousands of more times more powerful than the mind. That starts to radiate like a beacon of light on a hill. It can light up a whole city. They said, don't put your light under a measuring basket. Take the damn thing off, light up the whole side of the city. Be the beacon light where people can come to. And you know what? It speaks even when we don't speak. Most of the time we don't even speak it and it can't be taught. It's not us. It's something in us that's traveling through us. It's a melody, um, a divine melody that's coming through this unique diamond frequency that we are. And it's playing a unique uh, tone and it's speaking to people's souls. We can't reason with them up here. This says this is the way and the truth and the light. We've got to let that exhaust out. And eventually, like you're doing now, you're dropping down into heart and and. All I can say is it becomes more and more powerful. And eventually you'll, we move into understanding. We, we, we start to say it can't be no other way. So now when I look at people in religion, God bless you guys. You know, I, I was there too. And I know one day it'll, it'll serve you maybe now, but it, it may come to an end. People are fleeing to religion right now. They're from, 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 from well, religion. no, to from religion, religion? Oh. especially here in Boise. They're what they're looking at world events. And of course, oh. the, the religions have the answer. Jesus is coming to fix it all any minute. And so they're, they're, they're clinging on to that. But here Jesus said, you would be the light of the world. You would do these things in greater. So do we want to participate as a observer or do we want to participate as experiential? <clears throat> and so we're moving into experiential union with, with the great spirit of truth. And so you're being called into it right now. There's a lot of pain. I can feel your pain. I can feel your hurt. You'll start showing up in groups and, and you'll speak it. You'll speak the truth and you'll say, I'm tired of this. You will. I, I've tapped people on the shoulder and said, don't say that. That's wrong. I mean, it just comes out. It, it just comes out. You can't control it. Hawkins says, Dr. David Haw or Hawkins says, it's autonomous. It's autonomous. It's automatic. It's like in that group where I grabbed that book and threw it. It's automatic. It wasn't me that my arm just went over and grabbed that guy's book. It was something in me. 
it was it didn't want the pain and the suffering the people didn't know how to get out of that attractor field it's like poor god and his compassion had had enough had had enough and all i had to do was show up as a vessel and and that music played i didn't even know what it was but i'm going to tell you something dennis it was atomic energy it was atomic energy and i had no idea what it was I would kind of scared me a little bit, but I thought, what is this? I've never had this feeling <laughs> since then. I've had it many times. It's like he was, and it almost has to be, I'm going to tell you something. It, it has to be tempered. You can kill somebody with it. You can. Mm -hmm. I almost did one time speaking up in a large group during uh, COVID. And I spoke mm -hmm. the truth to a, a massive group jumping up out of my chair. And the guy's back literally went, like this and the spirit told me be careful and dan was yards away yeah it was yards away but the guy was abusing a man inside of a play and the man was like I, you know i got my mask what's wrong and all these people were walking around like nazis you know with the signs you know he he don't have a mask run over there and they were running out but in the, the audience and pulling off and, somehow it was yeah it was a little different but, but it was doing the job but they were just harassing it was, it was like no a reason. shield or yeah. something and he's like, what's up? And, and I yelled, all I said was stop policing. But I yelled it very loud in a group probably of over a but thousand. it was the energy of God. It was the energy. Out. And it went out and I saw the guy's back go like this, just straight. And I said, oh my God, man. And the dude just walked, he stopped talking to the guy. He walked out. The people with the signs walked out. And that was the end. And, and guess what? We never saw that guy the rest of the night. Never the night. And I, and I thought, the spirit told me, just be careful. I'm not saying this in a bragging way. I'm not trying to say no. I'm some damn Superman because I'm not. I'm saying that was yeah. autonomous too. It, it always comes down to abuse and suffering. When I feel abuse and suffering, something in me says, stand up. <clears throat> and so when I saw that guy's back straighten out, that kind of scared me. And it says, temper temper this use of the spirit that, that wants to come through yeah, you know anyway yeah you know and i just want to say this too is that dad and i were on a, a boat in washington and this little commuter boat was going through these islands and we met these hindu people on the ship and we we realized that they have so many similar views they love jesus like we do and all this and they had the holy spirit was clearly on them they were glowing. They were shining. They they were full of love. They were they were everything they said. You you, it, you couldn't mistake it. It was God. It was Jesus. And so it's like okay, you know what? That changes my mind. That that was a big deal. There were other things that had been going on too, but that 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 was just the the key. That was it for me. And I started really really enjoying other uh, like Parman's Yogananda's book, uh, um, bio, biography of a yogi. Um, I, I, I got to enjoy things that I never could before. Dan Millman's book, um, Peaceful Warrior. Um, just so many wonderful things that I never would have accepted before because I was so rigid with only my one belief system. God could only be in it. He could only be in Christianity. And once I got outside of that, it was such a beautiful thing. And I, I look forward to the day when um, our world does come to more of a place where just because you believe a little differently than me, well, so what? We both believe in Jesus. We both have the Holy Spirit. We both believe in serving, loving, giving. We're, we're all about that. So why do, why am I so worried that you also believe in this and and or that you know vice versa? They're worried. You know why why can't we just say, look, we agree to disagree, and that it's all good. You know the basics yeah. are here, but the Christianity's got where in, in other religions too, where it's got to be so rigid, where everything's got to be in alignment. I can't have a discussion with you and and go away from it unless we all agree on every single thing. We're gonna dig and dig and dig until we can find something that we don't agree on somehow. And then okay, well I'm not gonna talk to you anymore. But huh, nice conversation. But okay, well we're not in the same alignment, and so goodbye. But then I think great talk, great talk. You know, no, yeah, we got to get to the point where. I, I, it's okay if you don't believe like me and I don't believe like you. So what? So what if I believe in past lives? So what if I believe in, uh, you know, near death experiences? So what if I, I don't believe in COVID, but you do or, or whatever. So what, why can't we love each other and respect that there's reasons why we have differences? And so what, so long as God's there, love's there, you know, the Holy Spirit's there. So long as service is there, what else do you want? 
get out of the, your own way. It's like, we're in the way because we're so rigid. We've been programmed to see it that way, to do it that way, to think that way, to believe that way, to treat each other that way. We saw how to do it and we're doing it. We got to figure out that this is not the right way and that we need to let go and don't be so controlling yeah. of each other. And I want to say one more yeah. thing, De Dennis, where, where I see you're at right now is you're in the why. Why is this? Mm -hmm. Why God? Why is this happening? Why does this keep happening? Why is it not ending? Why? 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 It's going to shift. It's going to shift to Yay. use me. Use me to mm -hmm. help straighten this shit out. And then you're going to feel it. Then you're going to feel it. Then it's going to pull you into different places. And uh, you're going to see great miracles. You're going to see great miracles that you've never seen before. I got goosebumps on that. Yeah. I, I'm going to say one more story. <laughs> you know, Mount Shasta. We were out there and I was telling this kid about California, these, about these dogs. OK, these dogs were at the fence and they were like Rottweilers and they were really going wild. And you may have heard the story, but I told Angela, I said, watch this. I said, this is weird. There's something about my right hand. When I when I go like that, I've been in houses where dogs have growled and I went like that and they and they and they went in reverse, <laughs> like off the it. floor. So I told Angela, I said, watch. These Rottweilers came up to the fence and I go like this. We're just trying to take a walk, a peaceful walk. And, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. and I go like this. <laughs> and the dog just goes, art, 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 and runs up to the house. And the dude opens the door like, what'd you do to my dog? He thought like I shot his dog. And then there was a dog next door and I did the same thing. <laughs> the dog did the identical same thing. So I'm telling this guy at Mount Shasta, this kid, he came up, he had tattoos all over him. And he was pretty close to me. And I said, you know, I just stuck out my hand like that. To the, the dog. dog, and the guy goes, oh, 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 dude, you're choking me. You're cho I said, I ain't choking you. I didn't do nothing. He goes, Yes, you did. You're so I think he, he I think there me? was what a demon or some shit that came out. Now, I didn't do any damn thing. All I said was, I held out my hand, but it pointed at him and, and he started choking. <clears throat> and, and then he and was coughing. Okay, and coughing. And I'm like, Are you okay? And he goes, Man, dude, there's something, you know. And I never met the guy. So I don't know. Maybe there was something in there. There was a lot of energy. Uh, markings on him a lot of he was explaining all this energy a lot of, a lot of things about these uh, <laughs> this man that he met under the ground under the earth and that the man took him under the earth and showed him how to make these necklaces with all these crystals and stones and all this and showed it to us what, he, what he made with the guy and he was showing us all these things you know and um but it, but you know it's funny we were sitting there watching the lake and all of a sudden this dude comes up with his boat right in front of us and literally taking up our space and goes into the water with his girl from another country and starts, you know, getting his boat ready to go out in the water. Didn't care that he's right in our, our space, literally. And so he, you know, he came into our space. It was very interesting that all happened. I know it was a God thing, but somehow something did happen to him. And I don't know. And that's, and that's, one, did, of, that's but, one of many stories. That's, yeah. And those are true experiential stories. Yeah. You put me on a lie detector. Those are Angela's <laughs> true. I, I I eyewitness. Just, I and it goes on and on. Yeah. So it's you're going to move from why God, why is this shit going on? Why did you create such a piece of shit world? Why did you allow it to get like this? Why do you allow it to continue? Why do we come back over and over to the same shit? What is going on here to, okay, then if this is the way it is, fire me up. Amen. Fire me up. Let's go. Yeah. Let's do some work here. Because Jesus said that these and greater things you will do. And he wasn't kidding. He wasn't kidding. And so he said, don't marvel what I'm doing for these and greater you will do. So we've got to take him for his word and believe that, look, we may literally cast mountains into the sea and because mm. we stop the enemy or something, or we may be Moses. God tells you, I want you to take that stick over there. I want you to hit it on the ground and you're going to make water for those people. There's no water here. And what, Lord, what should we do about this? Okay, we'll do this. Okay, Lord, I'll do it. And then, you know, we're going to be the vessels, these and greater Jesus was alive in the example that we have in the Bible, three years of the Bible anyway. I believe he was way before that, doing many amazing things beyond that. But anyway, whatever, and three years. But but think about it. We're going to be alive more than that. So we should. there should be more demonstration. And the left so, brain says no all the time. No, because it's not anointed. It doesn't know yet. It, it doesn't know it experientially, so it can't believe it. And so that's our enemy. Our mind says, oh, this is all a crack of shit. That's all just shit that you know happened you know just accidentally and all this but eventually there's a pattern of evidence and there's been a pattern of evidence in our life that we've seen that this is real that we are invited into divine union 
And so that's been our journey till this point. And it's fun now. It's fun. I understand that people are touting that they're in grade school. Oh, I'm a Christian. Oh, I'm a, oh, cool. That's really nice. I'm glad you can draw on the little coloring board. You go, God bless you. That's really pretty. That's a pretty picture. But that's what it is now instead of, but, but there's a bigger picture. There's a bigger movement. And that's God and man, hope of glory, that we take that spirit into the world, into the darkness. And where there is light, there can be no dark. And, 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 the, and the anointing is asking us, will you let me light you up? Will you let me be the frequency within you? That is why we're here. Amen. That is the greatest thing on earth. I always say to people in churches, you guys are all wanting to get to heaven and paradise earth. When here you've got an opportunity to work with the masters, to work with all these ascended masters, all these people that come before us. We, we get an opportunity to do the things they did and greater. Amen. Why, where the hell are you going? What's out there? What's in the next dimension? What's up on heaven? What's in the what, what's going to happen when genocide happens in the earth? It's like no, no, no. And if we can tap into this, what we're talking about here, then life is worth living. Life isn't worth living like from what you're talking about. Like why is this going on? Why that? Why may I don't know how long why is going to last you. Well, why I'm going to say something. Why why last a long time? Why 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 we do it over? Why why why? And, and I mean I've been in it for years. Go ahead. Daniel, I think uh, what, what you're saying is very profound. Um, that state of why, 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 I've been long into it. And one of the solutions I took to deal with it, I much of the solution I find it in, the, in, the, in that parable that I told you of a good Samaritan and the, the neighbor. So, I'm trying to draft. I, I want to write something. I'm writing something about that. So much of what I am called to do about it, I explore it through writing. When I'm writing, I find out what, what do I need? What, what, what is my path that I have yes. to pray in this situation? uh if if you check like even on my facebook i think all these ideas i'm not yet to express them i don't have any post of these ideas that i have because i'm exploring i'm i, I i'm going deep into this situation and wanting to see i want when i want i, I start to Pour out my heart, my energy. I want to come fully fledged with, you know, sure of what I'm doing, of what I'm saying. Yes. So I, I'm, I'm writing something and it's a journey. I don't know how long it's going to take me to say, yes, I'm sure of this and I'm satisfied of what I wrote here. And that's it. But it's a journey. Uh, and as you said, one can choose to be to be just in the world as just as someone who is watching the show and he has no, no prayer to, to pray all. You say, no, I'm here. I have something to contribute to this humanity. We are here for a short period. Even my, my, my youngest ch child is now three years is going to turn four years the big one is is 10 years but all of them and all of us here included and everyone in this world within a hundred and thirty years let's say from now nobody will be here on this planet me you and even my youngest child oh, yeah. within a hundred and thirty years we won't be here that's right we, we we should be wise how we use this time that we have here and uh we can ask for a quickening be... dennis we can ask to be quickened yes. it says the spirit quickens so and god also yes. said i will give you back what the locusts okay. have eaten so the shit wasted shit time that we spend in religion and being separate god makes up for that 
we're, we're way beyond religion. Yeah, you know, way beyond that. And spirituality. Yeah. I got to say one more thing. I spent 22 years studying after I got out of religion. And guess what I did? I became filled with more knowingness. I had the esoteric, the metaphysical. I knew the Bible on four different levels. And I had all this. But nobody wanted that. It was just more separation. Let me tell you the esoteric meaning of what Jesus said by, you know, the water and the wine. And, you know, and people are like, what? And then it, then all of a sudden the spirit says, are you done learning? Are you ready to love? And then I realized Jesus said, you'll know them by their love. You'll know them by their fruit. By their fruit. It won't be. It won't be. I have this esoteric knowledge. I have this Masonic knowledge. Of, of masonry, or I have this special knowledge of, you know, the Hindus, it's like, you won't give a shit. Knowledge don't mean nothing. Knowledge puffs up. Knowledge separates. And I tell people on podcasts, why do you want to know what I believe? I know why you want to know what I believe, I tell people. So we can draw a sword and we can start fighting. You're one of those esoteric, you're one of those witchcrafts, you're one of those <clears throat> yeah, you know, and and I'm a Christian, you know, fighting for Jesus. And I'm like, okay, here we go fighting again. But can we love? Can we love? Will we love? Will we put aside? I had to dump 22 years of studying Kabbalah, Hinduism, Bara, and you Paul, name it. And Paul in the Bible did too. Remember, he said he had to give up. I had to unlearn, unlearn. so I could Paul. love. That would that could be a title. I had to unlearn so I could love. Yeah, sure. I think what we need is not to go around actually saying what we believe. We need to go around demonstrating what we believe. There demonstrating. You there you go. There you go. And That's let, it. And let God have your vessel, man. Let him have the vessel. Yeah. You know. And it becomes around... experiential over time. You were saying, you were mentioning, you know, when do I believe it? It, it starts to show a pattern in you and you start seeing it. Once you know it experiential, man, it's powerful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. You, you see, there is what in the region they call statement of faith. I don't, I don't think we need this statement of faith, you know, to know that Angela belongs to me. I say, okay, do you believe Jesus is this, is God or what? <laughs> no. You demonstrate what you believe and it's, how I treat Angela, how I treat Daniel, how I treat someone I meet at work, so that demonstrates what I believe. Because in all these personalities that these religions claim to represent, there is one core message, love. But they have a way of overshadowing it with many other things and love is disappears their principalities that they create comes on top and that's why they say okay to be a good person or to be a right person you must go around speaking telling people what you believe telling people that i believe no demonstrate what you believe yeah I, I think this you know, people of this generation, we like saying that we are civilized and we have many uh, generations that we, we say they were uncivilized, you know, dark ages. You know, I studied history in high school at, at university, I studied law. But unless we are still uncivilized as long as we, we are still isolated into these walls that were built, some by those dark ages people, civilized, civilizations, and we who claim to be civilized, civilized today, we are not yet being able to get out of these walls that were created by uh, civilization that we said they were uncivilized. So until we demolish these walls, we can't claim to be civilized. Yeah. These are wars that we hear are going on when you hear Russia and Ukraine and 
because one says I'm a Russian, another one says I'm a, I'm a Ukrainian. All people who are fighting there, these things that they are fighting for were created, were not there. And in the future, if we come back, if we would have a chance to come back in the 300 years, in 400 years, you might find that no country will be called Ukraine, no country will be called Russia. So all people who are killing each other, they are killing each other for something that didn't exist a few years in the past, and it won't exist much probably in the near future. Like this country, South Africa, didn't exist. It was uh, a few kingdoms, you know, Zulu kingdoms, Swane kingdoms, different kingdoms. There was no country called South Africa. A few years ago, there was no country called USA. You know, all these things are created. It's not a problem that they exist, but nobody should kill another one because he doesn't belong where I am. So, and th that's that's what we have to do. Religion, isolating people. I think two groups has has really isolated us. Religion and politics and culture, some in, in one way. Because I have my culture is the best. You, you, you people in the USA, you don't have culture. So no, you should die. May I have the best culture? Um, my political party is the best. You, you have the worst one. I know my political party want to bring peace. And the US doesn't want to bring peace. Therefore, let me kill you. Me who want to bring peace, now I say, I must kill you to bring peace. What, what kind of peace is that one? <laughs> so well, that's so, what we're asking, um, Dennis. We're, we're asking to die to this false sense of self. We're being literally asked to die to this ego. It's the same in medicine. I had a lady that her husband was an anesthesiologist. There was a doctor in there. This patient was dying. And the nurse said, doctor, doctor, he needs blood. Shut up, little girl. I'm, you know, I'm doctor. The guy died. Lots of guys died. People are dying because of the narcissistic narcissism of academianism. People are dying because of politicalism. People are dying because of religion. It's like those are the things we're being told until we die to that. That's what Jesus meant when he said that has to be crucified and we have to willingly do it. Now, here's what I think. <clears throat> I think if we're going to be in a, a great awakening, in this great yeah. awakening they're talking about, immense suffering. We have to all be eating that fucking dirt from the ground and 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 looking at each other and and our neighbor the buddhist hands us a bottle of water says here you have it not me you need it more than me oh my god that was a buddhist you, you know he gave me a drink of water i think it's if we're going to have some great awakening then we got we're going to have to come off this high horse of intellectualism religious political you know academianism uh, Dr. Hawkins used to say, if it's an ism, it ain't God. If it's an ism, if it's Hinduism, Buddhism, you know, whatever ism, Seventh-day Adventism, um, <clears throat> it's it's all part of this narcissism that we're living in of separation. And so fortunately, we've been called, you know, and we've answered the call and said, okay, all right, I guess I'm willing. I don't know how it's going to change. I don't know, but let me do what I can. I, I'm willing. I'm willing. Here I am, send me. Well, it's, and so, it's kind of yeah. like, you know, God said that you can all go on this prodigal son journey and, and you're all going to be playing God. And in the end, what kind of gods were you? Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, were you kind? Were you gentle? Were you loving? Were you like God, your father? Or were you controlling and mean and abusive and you know, what, what did you play? And and then when we're done with it, either we're going to say, when we're done with playing the wrong one, we're going to say, you know what? I really messed everything up and I don't even like myself. In fact, I can't stand myself. Oh God, will you take me back? And you start on your trek home. 
you know, we're all prodigal sons wanting to play God. And we're, we're, we're at some point, we all want to come home. And, um, you know, that was a touch oh. that I had happened to me, not just a year ago now, but Dan and I went to this, um, what was it called? Lavender festival. And this guy, he'd been a firefighter. He'd been, I think he said he had been an army or army or Navy. Um, and he'd served a lot and he'd seen a lot and he'd been controlled a lot, manipulated a lot. He was not happy with God, not happy with religion, not even sure he didn't know where he was at with God at the point that we were discussing. And anyways, when he discovered, we had the discussion about David Hawkins and how that literally that God, he let God fill his vessel so much that people are healed. And I said, that is how much God wants to be in our lives, where, where we are so one with him that we were so surrendered that, that yes, that is what he wants. And literally God just touched him right that minute. And the guy broke down. He could not stop crying. Couldn't hardly walk. He said, what did you do to me? I what looked at him and I said, me? are you okay? And he said, your wife just said something to me. I said, says what? He goes. And and she and she did something to me and he couldn't stop crying. And, and this went on 20, 20 minutes before we finally left. And he was still crying. He couldn't stop. The big, tall guy, tough guy. But God touched him because he realized God wants that kind of relationship where he loves us and and he, and he wants to love through us and everything about God. It, it, it is love. Of course, he's justice too. I'm not saying God is not that too, but, but, but he really has a lot of love that he wants to put forth, but he needs vessels. And so that guy's like, Oh my gosh, you know, I think you realize that, that I've been listening to all these people that say that we're nothing when God says, but you're not nothing. You're, you're my representatives. You're the, the house of God the temple of God, almighty God. So anyway, I think when all the world starts to realize that, because those of us who are realizing that, that everyone's going to change quickly. I really do. I think it's going to be a great revival. I, I just do. And um, whatever you want to call that thousand year reign of Christ, I don't, I don't care. I just know that God is in the business of raising us right now in my way of looking at things and that they're working on helping us. And um, more of us that come to this realization of the truth that we're, we're done playing God and we want to do it God's mm. way. We want to come home. We want to live in the family of love. We want to do it God's way. We want to be surrendered that everybody's going to, it's just going to be contagious. Like Dr. David Hawkins, who's the energy around was sucking everybody in. They were all healed and they couldn't get enough of it. And that is where we're going. I think good times are coming. I really do. And I think some really hard first though, but then I think like Dan said, but then after that, I think it's going to be really great. I really do. And I don't think there's any mistakes. You haven't made any mistakes, Dennis. I don't believe that. You just were placed in this world the way that you were in a certain situation. And you're where you're at because that's right where God wanted you to and be. And you've woken up. And the Bible says increase knowledge, increase pain. As we that's wake true. up, it's painful. It's that's painful true. to true. have my mother looking at me and say, I don't accept you anymore. Your dad would be ashamed. Yeah. I haven't talked to my brothers in years. My brother just died, you know, my younger brother. And I'm like, die to Jehovah's Witnesses. And, you know, we had this separation between us. And then her her family, the same thing. I'll never accept that man. And I'm thinking, why? Because I eat uh, seafood and work on Saturday. And, religion. you know, religion. And, and her dad trying to separate us, trying to pull her into Adventism. My daughter's never going to see you again. We got her down here visiting with us, and she's not coming back home. That's what he told me. I said, I'm, I'm married. I don't even know I'm, it. I'm married. She's never coming back. Her mother, she's never coming back. And all I've seen is religion, do what you said. But when you first wake up, it's very painful and it's very much why. But that soon subsides when you say, okay, let's do something about it. And my children have nothing to do with me. Um, and they're in their 30s, 40s. Um, and, and then I got grandchildren. I'm not allowed to know them. Never met them. I never met them. And But you know what? God, God said that, that yeah, religion's going to do this. But I, I choose, I've chosen God. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I'm going forward. And God said that, you know, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Jesus said this. I, I did not come to bring peace. Don't misunderstand. In this epic, if you will, then that the, 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 there's going to be division. He, I, I know this is horrible to, to say, but people, Christians hate it when I talk about this. But he said that um, that you're going to have divisions between mother-in-law and daughter-in-law and son and father and da 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 um, but you know, unless you're willing to let these go for my sake, for my kingdom, for my truth, you're not worthy 
of th this kingdom knowledge that I want to give you. You're not worthy of it until you can let go and say, I give it all for you, Lord. And a lot of times when we give it all, he gives it back later on. But we, we have to be, it's like a test. We have to be willing. And Jesus said, I didn't come to bring a peace, but a sword. So be that as it may, um, that's not how the kingdom's going to be. But for this experience and for this overcoming, that's what's been given as the tools to overcome is division and separation and the sword. Because my mom doesn't believe like me, but I've chosen truth over what I consider to be, you know, not as close to the truth. And so, mom, you go your way. I've got to go mine. And she hates me for it. I don't hate her, but she hates me because that's just where she's at. But that's okay. But I got to move on. And, 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 it's, and it's painful. I love my mom. Every daughter wants her mother to adore her. But um, it is what it is. And I want my children to adore me and my sisters and all that. They all have abandoned me and rejected me thoroughly. But because I don't stand for what they stand for. But I don't reject them, but they reject me. And in a way, I guess I do reject, I reject the fact that they abuse me. And I'm not okay with that. So in a way, I guess I do reject that part. But, you know, anyway. Yeah, so, um, Daniel and Angela, I, I can't thank you enough for having availed yourself today so that we can talk. It's, it's. It's very helpful in a way that I can't even be able to explain, but Good. Well, we appreciate you too. Yes, we do. And I, and I want to say this, Dennis, that heaviness you feel will come off. Just, just, just let it, give it some time. You're feeling the weight of the world. You're, too, it's, you're feeling it. Your eyes are open. So you're looking, seeing it absolutely as it is, as sick as it is. And you're sickened by them. So that's that stage. So just know that it doesn't feel good. It feels yucky. But that is going to pass as you continue to say, rebuild on solid ground. Rebuild this temple. True. Shatter yeah. the old one. And let me come into this thing and be a part of whatever it is you created me to be at this specific time and place. And then everything changes. This this heaviness you feel will start getting lighter. It'll start getting lighter. And then pretty soon you'll be in that space of light. Of, I'm, I'm not saying you're not there now. You're, you're fully awake yeah. to what's going on. But there's a, a new energy that's, that's going to come in and replace the old one. The old heaviness is going to be replaced by illumination of, of light that you have not seen yet. That will start to feed you in ways you've never been felt before. Your food will be to do the will of God, which is to bring this mm -hmm. truth that we're talking about into the world in greater and greater ways. Like you've never can even, you don't even know how yet. I don't know how, but somehow we just keep being asked to show up. And I'm looking forward to talking to you again, Dennis, soon, whenever you want to do a conference call. Do you want a copy of this video here and everything? Yeah, yeah. Okay, is it okay if I upload it into YouTube? Or if not, that's okay. I mean, I'll send it to you. I think we can send it to you in this file, but I'm also going to make a YouTube video out of it and put it up so that people can hear okay. this discussion. Because I, I think, Dennis, a lot of people need to hear what it is you're going through. I think a lot of people are there, too. Why? When are we going to stop killing each other? Go ahead. Yeah, sure. I, I think... Uh... It was very constructive and yeah, people needed to hear it. Um, if you didn't volunteer to come to YouTube and make such videos, I couldn't have heard from you. Um, and probably there are many others who want to hear something like this that we are discussing. And uh, I thank you. And I, I, it's my wish that at least once a month we'll be having time to meet and, and we make such a video and we prepare a topic that we'll discuss, that will really people that hold us separate, separately in different worlds. Yeah. So I, I'm very appreciating this and yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for the Thank you for the profound question. That's probably yeah. the biggest question anybody will ever ask. And wow, what a question. Yeah. You could go on forever.
Do you know the name of your book yet? Pardon? Do you know the name of your book yet? Are you writing a book? Yes. You said you're writing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the neighbor. I, I, I want to give it, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, 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 to bring this picture that Jesus was trying to bring. Who yeah. is your neighbor? I love I it. Love I that. love it. I'm so glad. That's a great, yeah, great. It, I was wanting too much to say yeah. something. Yes, and I want to make sure that I don't isolate any group of human being as I try to show who is the neighbor. Because we are on different journey in this life. I believe God exists. You believe God exists. This one says he's an atheist because of different experiences that he encountered on the journey. Uh, this one says he's this. This one says I don't believe God exists. But with all those differences that we have, we are neighbors. And our survival as humanity depends on all of us coming us coming together as a team not as one group of saying no we we are atheists these ones believe in god we don't want to associate with these people who believe in god we want to be around as atheists and others say no we will believe in god these people they are atheists they rejected god let's seek peace excluding these people that peace can't be achieved as long as we are excluding anyone amen to that brother Boy, that is beautiful you, you know dennis i was going to tell you you know I, I i was brought up jehovah's witness jewish combined and worldwide church of god that's how i was raised and so we had the jewish twist on the whole thing so anyway i understood that was meaningful to me just because i know you're writing a book about it but that samaritan story i want to tell you what i tell that a lot a lot don't i dan i, I, yeah. I use that story so many times because it's so important to me too, just like you. But one of the things I want to tell you, because I grew up in that Jewish twist thing. Well, the lawyers and the Pharisee. So in the, in the Aquarian gospels of Jesus, the Christ, I love that book, but they have a, a, a there's certain things that were taken out of our Bible is how I'm going to say it. That's in the Aquarian gospel. So in that story, they have the, the, the Pharisee, the, uh, let's see, the Pharisee, the, oh shoot, this is, I want to say scrap. So the Pharisee, the lawyer, uh, who's the other guy? The priest. I guess it's the priest. Um, shoot. Well, anyway, they have four. They have four in the Aquarian Gospels that that were came along and they wouldn't help. Yeah. So so it was the I guess it was the priest, the Pharisee, and then they had the lawyer. And um, anyway, they came along and nobody would help um, because and I'll tell you why some of it was because. If they did help, there's certain laws that they had where they were going up to a feast. And if they, if they go up to a, to a Jewish thing and they're dirty, soiled by touching a, a dead thing or a sick thing or a blood or the, all these different rules, if they touch that, then they're going to be unclean and they won't be allowed to serve in the temple. And if they couldn't serve in the temple, they wouldn't be seen. Do you know? And so they didn't want to get involved and dirty themselves. Of course, the one guy said, you know, well, he's got nothing to offer me because he's been robbed now. So if I, I, I think it was a lawyer that said this, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm good with charity as long as he can give me something back. But since he has nothing to give me in return, I'm not all for charity right now. You know, it was like all these different reasons why they didn't want to help. But, um, but they were just, um, you know, again, not love, but I thought the interesting one was the Jewish twist on it where I'll be soiled, I'll be dirty, I won't be able to be seen in, in the church services because I, in the temple, because I have soiled myself with this dirty man, this dirty man. And for whatever that's worth, I don't know, I think that that's, um, it's like, no, we're to do the right thing. It doesn't matter if that, if there's a man, I don't care who he is, yellow, black, white, orange, purple, you know, I don't care if they have a disease. I don't care what. If the man is dying and he's been treated, ill-treated, you must help. Sure. And, and that's the heart of the whole issue. But these men had all these reasons for it. The only thing I'm ever motivated to do is to get money or to somehow do it for, for my glory. So since the man has nothing to offer me, I don't want to help him. The other guy's like, 
No, because he, I might not be able to serve properly in the temple this week weekend because of touching that man. No, I don't want to help him. It's like, no, all of that doesn't matter. None of that matters. What matters is to do the right thing and to love your neighbor as you would want to be treated yourself. So uh, interesting, you know, when that happens to them one day and no one wants to come and help them. I mean, I believe it's just what comes around goes around. Call it karma, call it, you know, whatever it, it what comes around goes around. So they'll end up having that treated to them. And they're going to not realize that what I did to someone else is now being done to me. I'll be darned, you know? Wow. This is now doing happening to me. So we want yep. each other with respect and honor as if each person is Jesus, honestly, yep. treat them as if they are Jesus. So. Because uh, th that's very paramount because uh... You, you you can try to experiment that you can you can find out we, we've been talking about it but try and make yourself as someone who is in danger and who need help maybe say you are running away from jehovah witnesses or any group that is oppressing you and go to these groups that says that they believe in jesus in a church and say Please, I need your help in this way or this one. Before they think what to do with the help you need, they will ask you to join them. Look at this person who is wounded on the street. If before doing something to him you are first asking him are you a, a, a do you belong to judaism which synagogue do you go to okay please i can talk to my pastor we have um, a fund that is there that is supposed to help people with uh, with who are in danger please if you belong to our synagogue i can tell him i can let's go and tell our church uh, elders to organize and see how they can take you to, 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 to the hospital. And that's what is going on. And in, in my book, I argue that a go good Samaritan can't be an organization. Good Samaritan can be an individual who understands that what he doesn't want to suffer, nobody else should suffer that. Right. That can be a good matter. Yes. And but organizations, we have many organizations that, 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 that took that name of Good Samaritan. But the reason why this suffering is not eradicated, that we are seeing killing, killings, and who, who participate in these killings, who are participating in this persecution, being religious, being it cultural, being it political, it's people who go to church every day. They are the one who are used to persecute others. They are the one who are used to, to, to commit all atrocities. But if on individual level, we can be good Samaritan, something can change. Something yes. can change. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you, Daniel and Angela. I, I think one, one quick thing. I know you want to go, but uh, about the Samaritan, you do because another thing about the Samaritan is that the Samaritans were like the watered down Jews that the Jews hated because they didn't do everything right, right? And isn't it funny how Jesus uses that Samaritan, the low, the lowly piece of crap people of the world? You know what I mean? That's what they were back in that day. Don't know what they are now, but back in that day, the Samaritans were good for nothing. You know. They were good for nothing and uh, watered down, stupid, dumb, idiotic Jews. And no one liked them. They couldn't stand these Samaritans. And the Jews wouldn't remember even when Jesus went up to the well and they, uh, he was talking to that woman. She's like, you know, we don't talk with each other. I, you're Jewish. I'm Samaritan. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you doing here? You know, and the, the disciples are like, oh, my gosh, what are you doing talking to this woman? You know, you, you know what you're doing. Oh, my gosh. You know, and all of a sudden all the townspeople are coming and Jesus is loving on, on these Samaritans and blessing them and all this. Well, that's the Samaritan is the guy, the good for nothing. Nobody is who chose to serve his neighbor. So I think it was great that Jesus used that example because, you know, it's like the lowly person 
is one who has maybe the most love than anybody else. It's who the least expected person, who's that one that, that, that Jesus chose to give that love, you know? And I don't know. I just think it's kind of precious that he used the low, low good for nothing that no one likes, you know, like the man in the temple who's beating himself saying, I'm a sinner and I don't do anything right. And the guy in the front row is saying, yeah, but I tithe and, and I'm glad I'm not like that man. I'm a good man. I'm, I'm somebody, he's nothing. He's a loser. But God's like, who is, who, which one, which one am I hearing the prayer? The guy who's giving the tithes and doing everything perfectly and saying he's so good and I'm so self-righteous or am I listening and I'm loving on and hearing the guy who's in the back who's a, who says I'm a loser and I'm a sinner and I'm I'm not tithing right and I'm doing everything wrong and he's beating his chest but he wants to be clean and he wants to be pure and he wants to be right and God said that's the man I heard his prayer that's the man I love so it's just interesting yeah. that Jesus chose the Samaritan being the low low life but anyway I just wanted to bring that since you're writing that book it was important is that, to me is that African mahogany behind you yeah 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 sure mm -hmm. yeah it's beautiful mm -hmm. beautiful I used to work with that it's like a ribbon striped mahogany wow beautiful oh. Yeah. It's a good wood. Yeah, yes, he's, he's wood Dan's a wood finisher. He's a wood finisher. We um, finish wood. It's hard to find that wood anymore. That type of wood that's really beautiful. It has that red, real deep, fiery wood. It's called ribbon stripe mahogany. That's pretty. Yeah, like that. So, yeah. Talking about my book, uh, you know, as I told you, I'm trying to to use this story that this parable that Jesus tried to brought about and i'm trying to take it out from any group of people because religion has used again this this parable yes to me you know love your neighbor but what do they mean when they say love your neighbor love angela because we believe we belong to this group called mormonism so we are neighbors <laughs> so I'm trying to make sure when I'm writing to it, no group takes what I wrote and say, oh, yes, you see here what he said. This is the neighborhood that was said about. We, we here against others. I'm trying to bring this neighborhood, to, this neighborhood of people who normally don't have something in common that could unite them, like this traveler, and the this Samaritan, they had nothing in common. Amen. But yes, so 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 because I know somehow I think religion misinterpreted what Jesus said, and it has took over. And you know, I I, I think if Jesus can't identify with many religions, I'm sorry to say all of them who claim to be representing him. If he would come up, he would say, the word he said that he would say, I don't know you. Because what they say has nothing to do with what he wanted to bring about in this world. Yeah, so we'll keep in touch. Thank you so much yes. for, for the time. Hey, yes. Do you want us to send this to you? Do you want us to send this? Do you have an email you could send me in Messenger so we could 